All right, everybody, welcome back to the Midday Q&A. I'm your host, the Duck Man, and behind me here is Ruby. And I get a lot of requests to see Ruby or more of Ruby. People just love this car, really love this car. Out of everything that I've ever driven on my channel, this one seems to get the most compliments. It's just, it's just she's beautiful as she is. Really, I don't want to change anything from her stock appearance except this how I lowered it, and that's pretty much it. There's a piece of chrome trim that's missing from down there. It, uh, it wasn't holding on the clips very well. I never bothered to replace it. And she's really dirty because I haven't had a whole lot of time to uh, clean up after her. She's just a messy, messy girl. But anyway, there she is. Figured I'd give her a quick walk around before we started driving to give you guys a little bit of uh, an idea as to what Ruby looks like nowadays. I don't know. People keep asking for it, so there it is. A nice walk around of Ruby. And yes, that dent over there in the back, I started to uh, push it out a little bit. It's still not perfect, but it looks a lot better than it did. <laughs> there she is. All right. Well, as always, licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. And we'll be back with a driving video right after that intro. I've been looking for this for about two weeks. It fell down the back of my freezer and obviously froze solid. But as you can see, it's uh, it's grape. Usually these things are a real dark purple. And uh, it's like an oxygen blue right now. So I don't know what the hell happened to the color. It's just kind of got some little swirlies in it. Maybe that is the color that's left. Maybe it just separated. But uh, by the end of this video, we're going to let this thing thaw out. And uh, we'll see what color it is. <laughs> and, of course, what it tastes like, see if it gets its flavor back or if it ever lost it at all. Of course, being non-carbonated, I'm not worried about that. It didn't blow its lid off and it didn't crack, but, uh, yeah, we'll just let it sit. So I decided to take a little different trip around town. We're in the middle of rush hour, so you might see some crazies. Or we might get stuck at some traffic lights for some irregular long periods of time. <laughs> well, I thought that I should start with, um... Some of the rumors that are going around about me. Uh, some people have been saying that CIP1 dropped me from my um, sponsorship on Gregory the Bus, and that would be false. I'm still working with CIP1. I'm still using pretty much exclusively, wherever I can, CIP1 parts on Gregory the Bus. And uh, that's unchanged. There's nothing that's changed with that. Actually, I'm very, very happy with what's going on. And I mean, I advertise the heck out of them. And they don't ask for anything extra. And I'm going to continue to do that for the duration of that build. So yeah, CIP1 is, is still around. You just don't see a whole lot of CIP1 being mentioned at this moment because I haven't done a whole lot of work on the bus. Now that's probably going to be changing in the next couple days. Uh, in fact, I started to look at the bus today to review what I'd like to start doing on it either today or tomorrow, seeing as how it's rush hour today and it's a little late in the day. So I probably won't start on anything, but I may go ahead and start laying out some tools so I can start working on the thing in the morning. But um, I'm really excited to uh, just start working on Gregory again because it's been, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe about two months. I think it was about June the last time I touched him. And uh, here we are, you're watching this video. It's the beginning of August. Now, since I had the last driving Q&A video, that was almost exclusively uh, talking about my dad and what's going on with my family since he's been sick and at this point he's still in a hospital he's still on a ventilator and uh, he's a mess the doctor he moved to the new hospital which uh, I don't know if I mentioned that in the last video but he got transferred to a new hospital uh, the other hospital they were just completely incompetent the worst customer service ever everything was just slow and just difficult and the doctor knew that he selected my dad to be moved to a, a rehabilitation hospital. In other words, he believed that he was going to be coming around and that uh, he deserved to be elsewhere. So he kind of won the, the lotto. There was one open bed in there, and that's where they moved him to. And he's been in there, and um, they were trying to be very aggressive to get him off the ventilator. And unfortunately, every time they try to do that, there's always something else that stops that from happening. You know, my dad doesn't respond the way they expect him to. Um, every time they try to wake him up, he starts fighting with the ventilator again. He starts breathing way too fast and way too shallow, which is not effective for life. So they put him right back on the ventilator again, and they sedate him. So this has been a repeating process now for, uh, for the last several weeks, or two weeks since I recorded the last video. 
Um, the doctor, this new doctor that he's with, uh, it's, the old doctor's still treating him as well, um, actually gave me some very bad news and told me, you know, that my dad isn't going to live but another 24 to 48 hours. And that kind of freaked me out, and I went off the radar there for a couple days. And after about three days passed, he calls me up again, and he goes, well, there's been a change. And I said, what happened? He says, well, things are looking a lot better now. He says, not great, but he says, a lot better than they were. He said, Everything before, he said, was just dismal. And he said, notify your family if anybody wants to come in and see him. You can look through the little window, but you can't sit with him because he's still quarantined due to COVID. And... Um, it was just a hard thing. I mean, it's like he's super sedated. He's so far away. He's going to be behind glass. And all you're going to see is a man with all, all tubes and things plugged into him. That's not the last memory that I want to have of my dad. So I, 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 I couldn't bring myself to that during that time, and nor could anybody else. It's just uh, I didn't want to leave him alone, but at the same time, it's not how anybody wanted to remember him. Anyway, he managed to pull through whatever the hell it was that was bothering him. I did get out of the doctor. The secondary infection that was caused by the viral infection was not bacterial. Even though they were trying to give him antibiotics and stuff, it was a mold infection. Very, very common to get this particular type of uh, fungal infection due to the HVAC systems in Florida because they have a tendency to trap moisture and molds grow in them. And they said he probably had the infection all along, but he really didn't have any problems with it until he came down with uh, whatever it was that gave him the illness. And, and I hate to call it COVID because I still have my questions as to what that is. Because, I mean, as soon as he went in the hospital, he went, COVID. It's like, uh, did you test him? Yeah, of course we tested him. Like, but it takes 48 hours to get back the results. And then it still takes you an extra day or two to process them before you even get to read his name off. How can you say it's COVID? So anyway, I, I'm, still, I'm still very much on the fence as to who to believe. And I got a lot of really bad feedback, well, really annoying, obnoxious, stupid people feedback on the last video. And I've, I've since gone through and parsed those messages out. Oops, wrong gear. And uh, since parsed out those idiots that said the stupid things. But come on, guys. Number one, don't believe everything you see on the internet. I mean, that's rule number one about anything. But secondly, don't believe everything you see on the news. I don't care whose news you're watching. I don't care what channel you're watching. I don't care if you're reading the newspaper. Don't believe everything you see in the news. And certainly don't believe everything that you're seeing or hearing from word of mouth. You know, there's just no way. And anybody that commented, anybody that said crap that was telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about, wasn't a doctor, wasn't a nurse, had no medical experience whatsoever. So they're no more qualified than I am to say what I was saying. And what I'm saying is just that I, I disagree with some of the things that were being said to me due to the mismanagement of the hospital personnel at the place where my dad was at. I had a lot of questions because I kept getting different statements, different things from different people. And none of it to me was making any sense ultimately. It was just, it was a mess, just an absolute mess. Anyway, now that he's in a new hospital, Rather than me having to try to call 12 times a day, only to be put on hold and transferred to three or four different departments, ultimately being told that nobody is available after waiting on hold, you know, for 20, 30 minutes after being transferred. It's, it's let's just say, fucking ridiculous. I, I got tired of that shit. This new hospital, they call me every day. Every day, right between about uh, 12.30 and 3.30, I get a ring on the phone, and they give me an update on my dad. Now, today is actually the first day that they have not done that. And, uh... I don't know if I should take it as bad news or good news. Something is probably happening. What they were going to do as of recent is they were going to install a tracheotomy in my dad. And, and I know he just, <laughs> and I'm saying this sarcastically, I just know he's going to love that. Oh man, he's going to wake up and he's going to find that thing in his neck and it's just, it's going to piss him off. But I was the one, you know, that had to consent to it because he couldn't consent to it himself in his, in his, his condition. So. Dad, um, Dad, they were going to attempt to install a tracheotomy. Whatever reason, his uh, 
he was agitated even though he was sedated he, he was his heartbeat was high his blood pressure was up and they said well it's probably not a good time to uh, subject him to surgery so they delayed it they delayed it until today and it should have happened sometime today but again I couldn't get a clear answer as to what it was and then of course they didn't call me so I don't know once again that's supposed to be good or bad they were supposed to give me a call immediately after the surgery is completed maybe they're not calling you because the surgery hasn't been completed but the last doofus that called me, and, and I mean, everybody at this hospital has been really, really good, to be honest with you. Everybody's been good, except for this one doofus. You know, I pick up the phone, and what's the first thing you say? You say, hello. He says, hello. So I said, well, hi. <laughs> and he says, hello again. So I was like, okay, well, hello. And he says, hi. So now I'm waiting for something, and I don't know who this person is. I mean, I've never seen this phone number come up before says can I help you yes my name is John and he said this with a, like a South African sounding accent um, I'm medical staff at your father's hospital and I'm trying to put together what he said because his words were so strangely chosen it wasn't English like I know it so I can't put the words together the same way he's saying it so he says he's such and such 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 hospital blah 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 so after he finished that, I said, well, hello. And he goes, hi. And then he repeats who he is again. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I got to stop saying hello to him because he's not understanding. <laughs> anyway, he finally starts to tell me what's going on with my dad. And again, his English is so broken and it's unclear. And when I tried to ask him to clarify, he got confused. So. I took it as good news what he was trying to tell me that things didn't get worse which is good enough news but that he wasn't getting better either so I got him off the phone right about that exact same time mind you I'm sitting in my dad's uh, living room when this happened my dad's home telephone rings and I don't make it a habit of picking up his phone he's got his own answer machine and uh, I let him do his own thing well the answer machine went off and I heard a voice come through it it's just such such from a hospital and they mentioned his mother's name. Now my grandmother's 98 years old. And she's put it, we put her in the nursing home last, um, last winter because dad was having the open heart surgery and everything else. And it was just, it was too much for him to take care of a 98 year old. And he was constantly pissed off, which put him in a very agitated state, which is a very bad place to be when you're having heart surgery. Anyways, um, they were trying to give some kind of update and they said there was a concern and blah 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 phone number I grabbed the phone real quick picked up before she could finish leaving her message I said hello and uh, I explained to her my dad's in the hospital that you'll have to talk to me and she was okay with that but then she proceeded to tell me your grandmother has COVID and I went what the fuck another one I said, well, how's she doing? Oh, she's fine. I was like, well, is she sick? I mean, no, she's fine. It's like, does she have symptoms? No, she's fine. It's like, how do you even know she has COVID? It's just once again, somebody just jumped right to it. You got COVID. And uh, I'm really getting sick and tired of this shit. And she's, she's absolutely fine. I guess it's possible to be asymptomatic at 98 years old. <laughs> I mean, that woman is just magic, absolute magic. If she's made it this far, I, I, I don't think COVID's going to take her out, if she's even got it. I don't know. But immediately they just said she's got COVID. Now, she was in a nursing home. And right after the, um, the whole COVID craziness started back in, I guess it was December, January, they put her nursing home on lockdown. The only people that was allowed in and out was staff. Everybody else stayed. And... Um, that means one of the staffers probably brought the COVID in there if she does factually have it. And again, I still have my doubts. I mean, how can you just say, just jump straight to the conclusion without enough time to give tests, she's got COVID. <laughs> Nobody could give me a straight answer as to what was going on. And, 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 and I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm sputtering here. I'm stuck at a loss of words. So now my grandmother's got COVID, but she's fine. And my dad still got COVID and some kind of fungal infection and uh, he's stuck on a ventilator that his body isn't liking very much. But at the same time, he has to have it to live. So it's like a catch-22 in his situation. So now I've got the burden of the um, not quite power of attorney. Nothing's been signed over to me yet. 
but I mean the, the, the consent for the medical treatments of two of my my family members just wow just wow all at the same time it's like just wow I talked to my brother and my brother says well you know I got the same thing for mom and I gotta take care I was like well when was the last time that she got sick and he said well yeah it's it's certainly not been a shit show like what you've got to deal with well yeah she's not had that kind of issues she's in her um mid 60s herself and uh she's staying home staying away from things and she's of the age group of course that you know could be compromised although i don't think she's got any immunocompromised deficiency problems you know anything that could make her easily infected and uh having a problem with it so anyway, like I said, I've got my doubts as to who's actually got it and who doesn't. Um, the Fort Myers area where I was at, it seems like the numbers down there are much higher than anything that we saw in Pensacola. Pensacola is a pretty light light on the cases over here and, and very few deaths. It's just, uh, I mean, even if you look at the numbers and compare them to anywhere else in Florida, Pensacola has not been that bad. I mean, unless you live way out in the woods where there is nobody, where the numbers are zero, that's just because there is nobody there. But, uh, yeah, Pensacola's not been too bad, so I don't really get too much of a concern with, you know, going out in public or being around other people here. But down in Fort Myers, I stayed at home most of the time. My dad's house, I was afraid to go out. It's just, uh, people act like assholes down there anyway. You know, and they always get right up in, you, in your face and in your shit. And it's like, you're gross, you're disgusting, you smell bad because it's hot here. I don't want you near me. So if there's any chance or possibility they even have just a common cold, I don't want that nasty shit. I just don't. It's gross. So, um, that's where I'm at as far as dad's health. Uh, I'm going to be calling the hospital in a little while and getting an update on that. I would imagine that probably nothing has happened, which is the reason I haven't gotten a phone call. They were also supposed to call me about my grandmother. They want to give me two calls a day on her because that's what they do for family practice. And for the last couple days, they haven't called me at all. Zero. And this is a different hospital, by the way. Not the same incompetent one that my dad was at to begin with. She's actually in another town. Not too far away, but another town. And they haven't called me at all. And uh, I tried to call them today. And they said, well, the nurses all get together this time in the afternoon. And we all communicate as to who's a what's a. And uh, we'll call you back right after that. And guess what? Nobody called me. So now i got to figure out um, how to get in touch with somebody over at where my grandmother is at now. By the way, they kicked her out of the nursing home and they put her in a hospital. Um, once again, I think this is just for the money. I think they're going for that COVID money. There's no other reason anybody will be putting a 98-year-old lady in the hospital when nothing is wrong with her. How would a nursing home know that she's got COVID? You don't. You don't. You gotta run the tests. And if you don't get the test results back, in a certain amount of time, then you don't have test results at all. It's just guesses. You're just guessing. Anyway, I don't know. Nobody could even tell me if she had a fever. And she's not She's not got any symptoms. By the, by the way, she did have some kind of a node on her lungs, which was causing her to cough. And uh, they found this about, oh, four or five years ago, and they told her she had six months to live. Do you want to go through the cancer treatments and all this other stuff? And she goes, no. She goes, I'm old enough. She goes, I'll just go out as I am. She goes, I don't feel bad. I don't hurt. She says, I'm just coughing. And here she is all these years later, coughing a lot less. Whatever it was that was bothering her is just kind of either gone away or just not nearly as bad as it was. So she's not stressing over it. I just, I don't know about any of the doctors anymore. You know what they say, medical, medical practice is exactly that. Nobody's perfect at it. It's all out of practice. And I think when it comes to being that old, nobody really wants to give her the care that she needs anyway because she's that old. She's lived her life. They'd rather go take care of some kids. And I understand that. And I kind of respect that. If I was forced to choose, you know, between two dying people and I had to save one, I would probably go for the kid. I mean, it's just that's just what you got to do. It's just that seems like the right thing. Unless, of course, it's the rich guy that's signing your check. Well, then that's the hospital choice. You know, there it is. That would make more sense than for them from their standpoint. Oh, man. It's just, I, 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 yeah, I'm just totally beyond words. I'm, like, just really pissed off about everything right now. I'm just being driven nuts myself. I've actually been gaining some weight here this past month because I haven't done a whole lot. 
I haven't slowed down on eating, which was my mistake. I've been eating a little more and not doing a whole lot, which has just made me fat. And if you look under my chin in the last um, video that I had where I was uh, driving, you can see that there's a little roll under there that wasn't there before. So I'm uh, very dissatisfied with my body shape right now. Funny thing is, I've still managed to maintain my muscle low, but I just seem to have gotten more fat under my neck and around my middle section. Anyway, that's just the way it goes. The roll is damn window up because there's copyrighted music playing next to me over here. Come on, give me green light. <laughs> well, all in all, that's that. Hopefully this week we're going to get to see B. Uh, hopefully this weekend, which means there'll be videos next week of the Carmen Ghia. There'll also be some videos of Gregory the Bus if I can get everything organized the way I want to and get things set up. We also have a Volkswagen tech session this weekend. And as far as I know, it's still going to happen. And I don't want to hear anybody's horse shit as to who's wearing a mask or who's not wearing a mask. I'm just going to deal with your comments accordingly and delete them. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's just, yeah. Remember, we're not in a big city here. This is a middle of nowhere place. As I said, the, the cases in Pensacola have been very low. And uh, all the people that have re been reported infected were all from elsewhere. Very, very few people were actually living here that got infected. You know, some people, oh man, that's something else I want to throw out there. Some people said on my last video that if I've been exposed this many times and my whole family's getting sick with COVID, that I gave it to all of them. <laughs> I forgot to add that. Oh yeah, me. I'm giving it to everybody that I haven't seen in weeks or even, I'm sorry, that I haven't seen in months or years. And here I am giving these infections to people because I'm officially a carrier. Actually, it's quite the opposite. They got whatever it was they had first, and then I got exposed to it from them. So even if I am a carrier, I didn't give it to my whole family, you bunch of just lunatic idiots. <laughs> that's not what I said, and that's not the order of the events, and that's just not the way things work. Anyway, I'm, I'm off on a rant now, and, and I'm, uh, I'm getting bored of listening to myself. So, what else is coming up? Uh, Gregory the Bus, Eleanor, uh, yeah, Eleanor. We're probably going to go down and see Earl for another Eleanor visit coming up in the next several weeks. Lots has been going on there with Eleanor, lots of the final body work. He's fixed a couple of my boo-boos. There's a few places where things weren't even or, or absolutely symmetrical, and he, uh, he did a number on that car. That car is just... Uh, it's amazing. I mean, it, it, it looks like the same car, but it looks different at the same time. I mean, it's hard to explain. It's so familiar because I've been looking so closely at those curves on that Beetle, putting my eyes almost literally against that metal for three years, working on it myself, until it got to the point that it made its way over to Earl. And uh, as I said, there was no way I could have finished it the way it should have been finished. I just could not have given that car the respect that it deserved. And that's why it had to go off to a professional. And that's why Earl's got it. And uh, yeah, we'll have another update on that coming up soon in the next several weeks. Things are uh, things are good. Things are good. Outlook on that car is good. And, and I don't know, if we still get lucky, and hell, if we still have a frigging car show this October, who knows? Who knows what the world's going to do? Um, of course, we're going to try to get it to the car show. And if that doesn't work out, maybe I'll get Gregory. But again, I haven't had a whole lot of time to work on Gregory, so maybe that won't happen either. Maybe we'll get Bees Carmen Gia there, because that's the one that's closest to being put together, because it doesn't need that much. What is it, what's it need? Uh, brakes, electrical, the seat tracks put in, and uh, engine. That's about it. That's actually about it. And uh, if I really focus on it and we get the parts together, it's about one weekend's worth of work. And I could probably make another three, four, five videos out of it. After that, she takes the car home. And it's up to her what she wants to do to it next. She wants to start buffing the paint down. Make the yellow paint shiny. That's up to her. If she wants to uh, save her pennies together and ship it off to Earl to get it painted, well, that's, again, up to her. She'll be deciding what she wants to do. And if you got those questions for her, you need to ask her. And maybe we'll answer them in an upcoming Q&A where we're together doing that. Or... If that doesn't happen, then maybe we'll uh, we'll get an answer from her over on her YouTube channel. And that's right, she does have a YouTube channel. And I've got multiple YouTube channels, if you don't know this already. And all my social media links are all found right up on duckshit.net. And I might be pointing to the wrong side, I don't know. 
I'm not facing the camera. I might be over here. <laughs> but hit up duckshit.net. You'll find all my social media links. People are still sending me messages. I can't find your social media. It's like, guys, duckshit.net in your web browser, and then you click the damn link, and it takes you right to it. How hard is that? I mean, really, how hard is that? I don't get it. I really don't get it. <laughs> Anyways, licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck the dingle belly, and uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. We'll see you next time. All right, well, that more or less answers that question. And I'm right back to its original color. I don't believe it. That's one of the strangest things ever. Let's uh, try to open it with one hand here. That super Duckman grip I've got. Oh, man, I'm slipping. Uh, I'm slipping. This is my arm with tendonitis too yeah i'm gonna have to cheat all right there it is <laughs> right. smells the same tastes exactly the same too it's just warm from sitting out in the sun <laughs> thanks for watching